our children want to go with Miss Ball at this time. Ages five through nine or ten. Anybody that would like to go to children's church? <coughs> Rest of you be fine in Genesis. If you got your Bible, if you got it on your if you got a copy of the Word of God, or if you got on your phone, it doesn't really matter. Genesis 49. We're going to read four verses. And out of this text, we're going to we're going to leave this text and use our Bibles this morning. So just listen. If you can turn quickly, turn quickly. If you're making notes, just make notes and go to them later. Uh, but today, I want to look at some reasons uh, in regards to being all that we can be for the Lord and, and things that come in our life and things that hinder us. A lot of times, it's uh, things come in our life, people come in our life. It could be a boyfriend, it could be a girlfriend, it could be something, it could be somebody. And they hinder us from doing the will of God in our lives. And a lot of times we, we put ourselves on the shelf for the rest of our entire life. And then we have to stand before God empty-handed. Uh, because of the decisions we made and the, and the, and the, and the roads we chose to travel. And uh, so this morning I want to help you today. Okay, I want this to challenge you. I want this to uh, make you think, make you... Uh, Make you look inside your heart and your mind and uh, search yourself, as the Bible says. Because in these last days, we don't know how much time we have left to do the work of the Lord. And uh, there's a lost and dying world out there that's depending on you and me. And uh, we have what they need. Amen. And his name's Jesus Christ Amen. this morning. I'm thankful I know Jesus this morning. Um. You know, I was thinking over there a while ago that God's people are to be a part of the solution, not the problem. We have enough problems in our country, in our communities, in our families. How come we won't stand up and just be the solution? Amen. Amen. Um, it's easy to be the problem. It's real easy to be the problem. Amen. But it takes someone special to be a solution Amen. in a problem. For example, here's your, here's your one right here. I gave you this example before. Here's your example of being a solution. When you go shopping, you leave Walmart, you put your shopping buggy up, okay? You want to you wanna do the little things right, amen? Put your shopping buggy up. You can be a part of the solution. Don't be a part of the problem, amen? There's enough problems out there. Be a part of the solution. Hold the door for somebody. Be a part of the solution, okay? It's easy to be a part of the problem, okay? Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. That's easy. That comes natural. But it takes somebody special, young people, to be a part of the solution, okay? Um, but this morning, turn, if you're there, in Genesis chapter 49. We're going to read verses 1 through 4 to kind of, kind of get us started. And then we'll use different places in the Bible. Hope you've had a great week this week. Good to be in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Amen. <coughs> Thank you for coming. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance. The room's kind of spinning on me. I don't know if it's sinuses, my equilibrium, but the last few days I've just been really dizzy. So I'm apologizing in advance if I do something dumb or say something dumb. Uh, Genesis chapter 49, verses 1 through 4. I've been having a chauffeur. My wife's been driving me around, and I've enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate Brother Carl filling in for me Wednesday night. Hope y'all enjoyed it Amen. in my absence. All right. Everybody okay? All right, let's start reading. Genesis 49, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together. i got something to talk to you about. And uh, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Wow, what a verse. Verse 2, again, 
He reemphasizes, gather yourselves together, boys, and hear ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. And he deals with Reuben here first. Look in verse 3. That's his firstborn. Reuben. I like that name, Reuben. Reuben. I don't hear many Reubens. Thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength. He says all the good things, good characteristics. Okay? He doesn't lead with bad. He leads with good. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Okay? Look in verse 4. Keep verse 4 in mind this morning. Unstable as water. Now he gives the bad quality. Okay? That's going to keep him, but, but what his father Jacob said is going to keep him from excelling as a Christian. It says, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Keep that in mind this morning as we pray. Brother Harold, you want to open us in prayer? Thank you, my friend. <coughs> Amen. Thank you, Brother Harold. Appreciate you. Um, as I began uh, preparing this message, it was mostly for me, so if y'all want to listen, you can, but it applies to me as much as anybody, okay? So, uh, and that's the case with most, most teachers and preachers and anybody that stands with the Word of God, okay? They have to let it speak to them first. Amen. And uh, so I'm just a messenger this morning, and uh, we'll see what the Lord's got for us. But I want to call your attention this morning to the word in our text. The word is excel. If you want to underscore that word, underline that word in your Bible, if you mark your Bibles up. It says there, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, excellency of dignity, excellency of power. But in verse 4, he lets him know some truths, okay? Truth helps, okay? Sometimes it hurts, but it helps us. It challenges us. And fathers sometimes have to speak truth to their children. And unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. You've got to think about how unstable water is. You know, waters and creeks and ponds and oceans. I mean, it's always a rising and always a lowering. And the creeks right now are just as low as they can be. So, uh, I mean, it's just the water. Think about that. I like that how that's worded there. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. And so I want to call your attention to that word in our text. That word excel is to be all that you can be. Okay? Uh, is to be the best that you can possibly be. It means to accomplish all that you can accomplish. It means to go as far as you can go. Um, I believe this morning most everyone is born with a desire. I said most. There's a few that's not. But I believe that most everyone is born with a desire in their hearts to excel in life. Um, I don't think nobody wants to be a failure in life. I don't think nobody wants to be average. I don't think nobody just wants to be a part of the herd. I think everybody has a desire and is born with a desire to excel, okay? To do as much as they can possibly do, okay? And to be all that they can be. For example, the businessman, he wants to excel in the field of business. For example, the athlete wants to excel on the playing field. For example, the entertainer wants to excel in the world of entertainment. The politician wants to excel in the world, in the political arena. I don't believe none of them just want to be mediocre, part of the herd, just to blend in. They all want to be what they can be and excel in the field or career that they have chosen. Okay? So I said all that to say this. Let's flip over to the spiritual realm. <clears throat> I've never met, since I've been in ministry, I've never met a true child of God, wrote Carl, who really got born into the family of God. I've never experienced a true person, a person that gets saved 
and begins their Christian life, I've never, never once met one or encountered one that did not want to excel for the cause of Christ. Amen. Never. I can go back to the time I got saved, y'all. And I'm ashamed to even stand here and say this, but there was, man, I could have charged hell with a water pistol, okay? I was on fire. I was excited. I was telling everybody about Jesus Christ and what he had done for me. And that's all witnessing is, is telling somebody about what Jesus done for you Amen. and how he delivered you. It's just that simple. But where's our zeal and our fire and our enthusiasm to tell others about Christ and to invite others to come sit with you at church? But uh, that's not what I'm talking about today. But every child of God enters the family of God with a heart and a desire to excel. I truly believe that. If you've truly been born again now, I'm not talking about go through the motions and, and come up there and just talk to the preacher and go through the I'm talking about truly getting washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about getting saved. But I'm talking about getting converted. Um, every person that gets saved begins their Christian life with a desire to excel as a Christian. And, and be the best Christian that they can be. They do as much for the cause of Christ as they possibly can when they get saved. That's why our best church members are those who's been saved for six months or less. That's your best church members. Because they're excited to be a Christian. Amen? <laughs> Where's your excitement? This morning? Where's my excitement this morning? Just a question. Where's it gone? Has the devil stole it from you? Because it don't belong to him. God gave you that. God gave you that joy and that peace and that love in your heart. Amen. And that passion to tell others about Christ. So if it's gone, then the devil must have stole it from you. Amen. Time you take it back. It is, it is past time you take it back, sis. Um, but I've never seen a Christian. I'm talking about someone who gets saved into the family of God that didn't want to excel. They're wanting to do something in the church. They're, they're like, Brother Stephen, what can I help do? What can I, you know, they're, they're asking questions about the Bible. They're, they're just in to the things of God. Amen. And that's the way it should be. Um, so they're wanting to excel. A new convert has so much zeal and fire and enthusiasm. I just love being around new Christians. Um, but sadly, here's the sad thing about it. Not always, but here's the sad thing about it. A lot of times, here's what happens. That doesn't always last very long, okay? Because situations come. The devil allows, you allow the devil to put people in your, in your life. Uh, you allow things to take your time from the Word of God. You allow things and devices to take your attention from the things of God and so forth and so on. And before you know it, you're like, wow. Where did that excitement go? Where did that zeal and that fire go that I once had for the Lord? Um, but sadly, that doesn't always last very long. We quickly begin to cool off, okay? We quickly begin to become carnal. And, uh, and then that results in Christians living substandard lives, okay? That results in, in Christians living substandard lives and, and accomplish, accomplishing accomplishing little or nothing for the things of God. And then, and judgment comes one day, we have to stand before the Lord empty-handed and ashamed. Because we chose not to excel and do everything that we can do while we're here on this earth for the Lord Jesus. And here's the sad thing about it, y'all. Here's what breaks my heart. I'm talking about Christians who, who are talented. I'm talking about Christians who, man, I can name you some. I would never do that. I'm thinking of some who had great personalities, who were gifted with spiritual gifts and talents, could sing, could know the scriptures, was intelligent. I mean, they had all the tools to be spiritual giants and excel for the kingdom of God but something somewhere something happened 
and got in between them and the Lord and their relationship. Some of you sitting here, you're in church. You're in the right things, you know, you look the part, but really your relationship with Christ is not where it used to be by no means. Something, someone has come between you and the Lord. Okay? It could be yourself. It could be, it could be all kinds of things. But most Christians, those Christians that were equipped with talent and spiritual gifts, Christians that had great potential, man, I know some that had great potential, who are nowhere around the things of God anymore, living for the world like they have never been saved. Going to heaven, but that's the only thing they got for them, is going to heaven. Wasted their life. Wasted their ministry. Some were very educated. Some were gifted with qualities, okay? I mean, very gifted people that God could have done some really big things with. Uh, these people had the, the potential to be spiritual giants, and they would have an impact on the world through their life and ministry. But something happened, okay? You know people like that. I know people like that. You know, well, here's the thing. It's very easy for you and I to be that person. We're not exempt, by the way. Um, I heard a preacher say one time that we all have the potential to mess up really big at any time. <clears throat> I know I do. But somehow something happened, something went wrong, and they're not excelling for the cause of Christ. And they never amounted to much for the cause of Christ. Just never amounted to much. Had everything they needed, equipped with everything they needed, but never amounted to much for the cause of Christ. So I want to give you some things this morning that may help us. I said us, that may help us this morning. Say, what is it, Brother Stephen, that keeps Christians from excelling? <clears throat> what is it that's keeping you from excelling and being all that you can be for the Lord? Why don't Christians excel? Why do they not excel for the cause of Christ? They get saved. They're on fire for the Lord, man. They, Michelle, I mean, they're on fire. Okay? You've been, if you've been truly saved by, by the grace of God, you know what I'm talking about. God puts, puts all that in you before you let the devil take it and rob it from you, man. And you are just a happy child of the king. Amen? And... That's what makes some of the best church members is those new converts. And, uh, but some don't excel because I'm going to give you, I, I, we'll see how far we can go. We'll see how far we go. I'm not going to keep you long. Number one is found in our text. If you'll go back to Genesis chapter 49. Number one, a lot of people never excel. Okay, A lot of your family that you come talk to me about, a lot of your friends, a lot of your, you know, they you just, you, you pray for them, you worry about them. A lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of Christians never excel because of instability, okay? They're just unstable. Um, Jacob said there in verse 4, he gives Reuben all these compliments in verse 3. He said, Reuben, thou art my firstborn. He had, he had great, great hopes, okay? For Reuben, Reuben, thou art my firstborn. My might in the beginning of my strength had all the qualities I just told you about. Okay, He had all the qualities. The beginning of my strength, excellency of dignity, and excellency of power. Verse 4, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Instability. That's why a lot of people in churches never excel for Christ because they're inconsistent. They never stick with anything very long. I've learned that about people in ministry. Just because they start something don't mean they're going to finish something. Uh, talk cheap, by the way. Y'all know that? Actions speak a lot louder than words. Here's an old saying for you. Be seen, not heard. <laughs> That's an old saying. Be seen, not heard. Um, well, we could all live by that, amen. But we like to hear ourselves. 
You ought to, you ought to mean what you say and say what you mean, okay? Uh, but instability. Jacob said to his son Reuben, Son, you've got all this potential. Look at verse 3. You've got great potential, but you're not never going to amount to much for the cause of Christ because you're unstable as water. You're inconsistent in the things of God. Inconsistent to the house of God. Inconsistent to the word of God. Inconsistent to the prayer closet. You're inconsistent in your walk with God. And you're unstable. And the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In every way in life. Inconsistent. In we're out, we're up, and we're down. We're on, and we're off. We're hot, we're wait, and we're cold. Unstable Christian, and all across the churches in America. No stick to it. When it gets tough, can I give you some good advice? Stick with it. <laughs> when it ain't popular, young people, Stick with it. When it don't look like it's going to work out, stick with it anyway. I'm going to tell you something. God will see you through each and every time. <laughs> Amen, he will. Um, one day you meet them and they're this person. Okay, Y'all know what I'm talking about. One day you encounter them and they're that person. Uh, one time you meet them and they're involved in their church. Well, the next time you encounter them, they ain't been to church in months. They're in, they're out. They're up and they're down. They're cold and they're hot. They're on and they're off. Instability. Now, Reuben, instability is why you will never excel at anything in life. Mm. Some are unstable to the point. One day they're a member, and I understand God moves people churches. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is some people are unstable to the point that they're part of this church when you see them. And then you run into them again. Now they're a member of this church. And then you run into them again and now they're a member of this church. And then you run into them again and now they're a member of this church. Instability. And those people never amount to anything. They make a lot of noise and make a lot of racket. But they truly never put their roots down anywhere and really make a difference for the cause of Christ because of inconsistency. That inconsistent nature is in you and I. It's called the flesh nature. Okay, You've got to overcome that. Um, no stability. We wander and we waver all through life and never have any stability and never amount to a whole lot for the Lord because there's no stick to anything. So therefore, we never accomplish a lot. Amen? Number one, we find that people, that Christians don't excel for the cause of Christ because of instability. Inconsistency, just unstable. You got to make your. The Bible says, "A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways." Brother Junior, that means you've got to make your mind up and quit playing both sides. Quit straddling the fence. You've got to make your mind up who you're going to serve and who you're going to live for. Second of all, some Christians never excel because the number one instability. Number two. Is biblical ignorance. Okay? They know nothing. They know just enough about this book to be dangerous. They have not read, Brother Pete, from cover to cover. Never. There's chapters and books that they've never read. Skip and look, the Bible says that all scripture is inspired by God some Christians never excel because of biblical anchor. everything in the Christian life rises and falls on their knowledge of the word of God okay 
<laughs> everything rallies around God's holy word. Everything. This is the final authority. Not daddy, not mama, not the preacher. This is the final authority. Okay? This is you and I is how we navigate life. It's through the word of God. It'll teach you, young people, it'll show you who you need to look for in marriage. <laughs> Daddies and mamas, it'll show you how to raise your children right. It'll teach you how to treat people, how to talk to people, how to react to people. It'll teach you what to drink, what not to drink, what to eat, what not to eat. It'll teach you every single Young people to teach you how to how to obey your parents and be successful. It'll teach you everything that you've got a question about. The Word of God's got an answer for it. But we don't know this book. We know Facebook. We know the internet. We know everything about everything. We're so knowledgeable now. Okay, we know everything. We got the Google search, we got the Siri, is that what you call it? The Siri. But we don't know God's word. And we'll never excel if we don't know what's in these scriptures. You know how to be have a successful marriage? Right here. <laughs> right there. The Bible, the basic instruction before leaving earth. Man, the Bible. And there's things in there you've never even read for yourself. It's not enough to come hear a preacher preach about it. It's, it's a start, but you've got to get your nose in the pages of the Word of God. How can you have a relationship with God if you do not have a relationship with His Word? Because the author of this book is God. Yeah. So how can you have a relationship? How can that relationship be right if you don't have a relationship with the word that he gives? This is how he speaks to us, church. This is how he chose to speak to his people. He's not writing letters in the mail. He's not, he's not writing things in the sky. Okay, He's not doing that. He's going to speak to you in his word. Go back to Joshua 1, verse 8. I'm sorry, not back to Joshua 1. Go to Joshua 1 and verse 8. Joshua 1, verse 8. Here God is giving Joshua in, in a very important instructions. Okay, He's got a big task ahead. Moses has passed away and Joshua is the leader. But here God is giving Joshua uh, instructions on how to, to do this job and how to do this great task successfully and he's telling him and he's encouraging him and he's telling him what to do to get the job done there's no success without a working knowledge of this Bible Amen. it is essential not optional it's essential right. Joshua 1 verse 8 says again here's God as Joshua is giving him instruction on how to complete this task this job this great journey that they're about to begin, and he's going to be the leader of it. The Bible says in verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, listen, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. My goodness. So this is how you're going to do it. By the word of God. The instruction manual. This is how you're going to navigate life. Is by the word of God. God said if you're going to mount to anything Joshua. If you're going to do anything for God. You got to know this Bible. Amen. Amen. And that's the case for us today. If you're going to amount to anything, you've got to know what God's word says about it. Our churches are full of Christians that are spiritually and biblically ignorant. And I put, I'm not saying that ugly. 
Um, because there's, why is that? There's no relationship with God's word. So if there's no relationship with God's word, there's really no relationship with God. Because this is God's word to you and I. This is how he speaks to you. If we had to take a test exam, how about this? If we had to take a test exam, Brother Carl, to get into heaven, and the exam was on this book, I wonder how many Christians would make it. Hmm. If the exam was on this book, how many Christians would get into heaven? We don't know this book. A lot of times why you treat people ugly, you just, you don't, you, you, and that's going to get to our next point, not only knowing it, but doing it. <laughs> hey, everybody okay? Amen. It's going to be all right. Lord, Word of God wants to help you, okay? Um, I don't know if a lot of Christians would get in, though, if we had, any, if we had to take an exam on this book, because we don't know what's in this book. We know what's in everything else. We know what's in our phones. It's consumed our country. Devices, and technology, nothing wrong with that. But friend, when that consumes you, that becomes a problem. When that become, has president, precedence over the Lord, then that becomes a sin and a problem. It's okay to have things and do things, but when those things have you, there's a problem. And you got to deal with that problem. We have not read this book from cover to cover. Jesus said this, man shall not live by bread alone, Amen. okay? But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. Why every word? Because the Bible says all scripture is inspired by God. Amen. Sadly, a lot of Christians will wander through this world with accomplishing not very, very little for God. Number one, instability. You just never made their mind up. They're in, they're out, they're on, they're off, they're hot, they're cold. Up and they're down. Just unstable. And second of all, there's biblical ignorance. They just don't know nothing about God's word. Thirdly, we got a few more. Again, all these points were for Stephen, the preacher man. So y'all get to hear a message for Stephen. Many Christians will never excel because, number one, instability. Number two, biblical ignorance. Number three, many Christians never excel because of disobedience to the word of God. Okay? They know the word of God. Man, they know it, Brother Carl. <laughs> they can tell you. They can spit it out, but they've never made, they're content with just knowing it. But they're not a doer of the word of God. It's not enough to just learn the scripture. It's not enough to just know the scripture. It's not enough to just study the scripture. We must live by the scriptures. We must live the teachings of the word of God. We must live the principles and the precepts and the commands of the Scripture if you're going to excel for the call of Christ. Just knowing the book does not enable you to excel and prosper. Can I read you Joshua one more time? Joshua 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night means learning, studying, learning the scripture. The book of the law, thou shalt meditate there and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written. Wow. That means you doing what you're learning. I wonder today if we all just lived what we already have been taught in the word of God. Here's your one right here. I wonder if we all loved our neighbor as ourselves. Mm. So are you just learning that? Are you living that? I wonder if we all live, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. What if all of us men did that? Ladies, there's a good spot to say amen. amen. 
Y'all missed it. <laughs> I'm just giving us some examples. What if we, Brother Harold, what if we lived all the scripture that God's already given us? That we know, we understand it, we've been taught it all our life. What if we really lived it and were doers of the word of God? How God could bless. But many don't excel because of disobedience of the scripture they already know. I'm ashamed to say I'm that guy. Look in James chapter 1 with me. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. I'm going to go ahead and start reading. We ain't got time to wait. But the Bible says, Be doers of the word and not hearers only. We like to hear it. We sure don't like to do it. That's where the success and the prosperity, that's where the blessings come from, is doing the word of God. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if, you, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Verse 25, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, the word of God, and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed and be blessed indeed wow Here's your, I'm going to save you a lot of preaching all our Bible knowledge is useless if we don't obey it for God's glory and honor it's useless God expects you to do what you've been taught, what you've been learned. Not only that, many Christians will never excel, okay? You'll go through life trampling around. You'll never excel because of, number one, your instability. You've never made your mind up. You're inconsistent. Number two, Biblical ignorance. You don't know what the Word of God says about anything. You know enough to be dangerous. You know enough to go in there. If you think of something, you go in there and find it and look it up for yourself. Thirdly, many Christians don't excel because of disobey, disobedience of what they do know. Fourthly, many will never excel because of not many sins, but that one sin. That one sin that you like to let hang around. You know you ought to confess it. You know you ought to get rid of it. You know you ought to deal with it. But it's still there. It's been there since you got saved. The Bible refers to it as a stronghold. The Bible refers to it as a besetting sin that so easily besets you. It could be anything. It could be anything. It could be the spirit of unforgiveness. Or you like to hold grudges. It's not wise to probably take your grudge to the grave and then stand before God with it, is it? Some of it is is strife. Some people, some people is envy, jealousy, and you let that stuff hang around. Some it's liquor and drugs and sex and all those things. I don't know what it is. But you'll never excel because of that one sin. Some of it's just... Our churches are filled with people that they're not living out in the world and, and, in, and in wickedness and, and ungodliness, but they have a, a little pet sin. And they just won't get right. A lot of, it's un, it's a lot of people's is unforgiveness. <clears throat> they just hold on to that thing and hold on to that thing and will not turn the page on that thing and give it to God. It consumes them.
It can even be called a stronghold. Most Christians have a sin they never seriously dealt with in their life. They just let it linger around. They never overcome it. And they never excel for the cause of Christ. I wonder if we're willing to let God give us victory over that thing. Because he sure can. I think this is the greatest problem in Christianity. Is people have got that one sin. I didn't say a lot of sin. I didn't say you was out living ungodly, wicked, and then out in the out in the public, you know. I'm telling you, this is something between that only you and God know about. You kind of keep it hid. Kind of keep it quiet, but he knows about it. The greatest problem, we'll never excel until we deal with that. Can I read you a verse of scripture? Proverbs 28, verse 13. Don't take my word for it. The Bible says 28, 28 verse 13, make a note. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Wow. I'll read it one more time. It's short. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Many Christians will never excel because of instability. You're just unstable, inconsistent. Number two, biblical and ignorance. You don't know what's in this book. You never took the time and the initiative to get in this book. Christians, some that will never excel because of disobedience of what they do know in this book. And then some will never excel because of that that sin that they let hang out. Number five, some will never excel because of, we'll stop with this one. Some will never excel because of simply worldliness. Just in love with the things of this world. Not necessarily bad things, but they serve and love it more than they do the things of God. Philippians chapter 2 verse 21 says this. It says, For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus, which are Christ Jesus. Paul's talking about Christians in his day and how there were a shortage of Christians right here in Philippians and how there were a shortage of Christians who were making their life count for God. There was a shortage of them. And there was a shortage of Christians making their life count for God and making a difference in the God's church and God's work. And this verse is in the Philippians chapter 2, verse 21. It says, For they all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Seeking the things of this world, the things of their own, instead of the things of God. That's where a lot of Christians are today. Seeking the things of their own. Seeking the things that this world has to offer them. Not necessarily bad things. What I've discovered, y'all, I'm trying to finish up, Brother Ray, if you want to start making your way. (coughs) Thank y'all for listening today. What I've discovered is that the world is is, is kind of addictive, okay, the things of the world. And they're not necessarily bad things. A lot of them not, you know. You can make them bad if you put them before you and God. They they can become a little G-God. They can become an idol to you. Um, But what I've discovered is that the world is addictive. And it's very easy for what started out as an innocent hobby to come between you and God. That's how the devil works. <laughs> He'll do anything to, to separate and divide. That's what he does. He divides. He's all about division. Like, look at our country. God's all about unity. The devil's about division. Okay? He wants to divide. And he wants to divide you and God. He does not want you and God to have a relationship. He'll use anything or anybody to do that. But what I'm trying to say is I've discovered that the world is addicted and it's very easy for what started out as a hobby to become a habit. An innocent hobby to become a habit. Before you know it, we 
it. You ain't got time to be at church. Before you know it, you ain't got time to be in God's Word. Before you know it, you ain't got time to be with your family and spending time with your children. Before you know it, you're consumed with work. Before you know it, you're consumed with this, that, and another. You ain't got time to make it to the house of God. If you're not careful, it will take front seat over God in your life. It will take priority over your church and over your Bible study and over your prayer time. And you'll find yourself a part-time Christian and a full-time fill-in-the-blank. That's where you'll find yourself because of worldliness. The Bible says in Colossians 3, in Colossians 3, Verses 1 and 2. If you are then risen with Christ, meaning if you're a child of God, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Seek those things that are in heaven. Amen? Those things that God abides in. Verse 2. Set your affections on things above. And not on things of the earth. That word affections means set your time, young people. Set your affections means set your time on things of God. Okay? Set your uh, interest on the things of God. Set your, all these, all these things. Set your, uh, your, your interest, your time, and your attention on the things of God. Seek ye first, the Bible says. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right. And he said, all of these other things I'll add to your life. A lot of times he takes the back seat. And these worldly things take priority. We wonder why we don't excel as a Christian. We don't make a difference in our schools. We don't make a difference in our community. We don't make a difference in our families. We get so caught up sometimes, talking, preaching to myself, we get so caught up sometimes in what's going on in this world and all the things that it offers, okay? A lot of times they're innocent things. But we get so caught up, all, caught up into it that God is no longer God in our life, but whatever that is, that fill in the blank, has become God. And it took your time, it took your attention, it took your affection, it took your passion. And we're just wandering through life, not excelling for the things of God. 1 John chapter 2, can I read you a verse? Three verses. 1 John chapter 1, I'm sorry, verses 22 through 25. These verses spoke to me a very long time ago about um, about this this subject it says here it says um, I'm sorry I'm in the wrong spot first John here it is first John chapter 2 verse 15 through verse 17 first John 2 15 through 17 it says love not the world okay when it says world there it's not talking about the people it's talking about the things in the world what's going on in the world love not the world okay neither the things that are in the world. So it's okay to like stuff. It's okay to enjoy your bass boat, guys. It's okay to enjoy turkey hunting and deer hunting and sports and all these things that God's given us to enjoy. But God said don't love these things. Don't let these things consume you and come between you and your Heavenly Father. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man that love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We'll say things like, oh, I love that old truck. Oh, I love that old, love that house. Man, I love that stuff. Man, that's contrary to the word of God. It's okay to enjoy it. It's okay to like it. It's okay to use things God's given you and be good stewards of it. But love, that's a strong word. You start talking about stuff. I love that. I love that. Love them clothes. I love this. I love that. Nothing wrong with that stuff. The Bible says love not the world, neither the things in the world. 
For all that is in the world is this, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. It is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17, the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. But we get so caught up in all these things. The devil lingers these little these little things in front of you, these little shiny objects. There we go. You show me who and what you serve the most, and I'll show you who and what you love the most. Because what you love is what you'll serve. Who you love is who you'll serve. This morning as we stand, I wonder, I ask you this question. I wonder if we're applying ourselves. I wonder if we're excelling for the cause of Christ. Say, what is excelling? It means to be all that you can be. It means to accomplish all that you can accomplish for the cause of Christ. It means to go as far as you can possibly go for the cause of Christ. For some, it's instability that's keeping them from excelling. You're unstable as water. You're up and down, on and off, in and out, hot and cold. For some, you just don't know what the Word of God says. For some, you know what it says, but you are not going to do what it says. You're hearers only and not doers. For some, it's a sin that's keeping you from excelling. The sin that you and God know about. For some, you just you just in love with this world more than you are God. I love what the Bible says. I jotted this down this morning. It said that all things are created by God and for God. <laughs> And we are his people, and we are the sheep of his pasture. Did y'all know that? We are created by God and for God to bring him honor and glory. Everything we say, do, eat, whatever we do, it is to bring honor and glory to God. I'm thankful this morning that, that God in heaven wants to fellowship with somebody like me. He wants to fellowship with people like us. How's your fellowship this morning? Are you wanting to excel? Amen. Let's pray this morning. Lord, thank you so much for this word. God, your, your scriptures are so challenging, convicting. Lord, thank you so much for, Lord, just taking and being long-suffering with us, and being merciful with us, God, for second and third and fourth chances, Lord. Lord, for forgiving us of our sins, Lord, when we come to you with it. Lord, in cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Lord, I pray, Lord, if there's someone here today, Lord, that's holding on to that unforgiving spirit, Lord, today would be the day that they let things go and get it right. Lord, today, if there's no relationship with your word, God, today, that they'll get back into it. And they'll make time. There'll never be time. We have to make time for the things of God. God, thank you so much for loving us, even when we're unlovable. And thank you for being there for us and being such a good God to us. I ask you to bless each head that's bowed, each family represented today. Lord, you know each need, you know each heart today. Lord, you know where they stand with you. Lord, and just ask you to bless them in a special way. Thank you again for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.